Whether you filled your hard drive or it's just plain dead, replacing the hard drive in your iMac is not as difficult as you might imagine. And while the lack of obvious screws might make it seem impossible for you to do yourself, the truth is it's not that hard. Hi, I'm MJ with iFixit, and today I'm going to show you how to replace the hard drive in an aluminum Intel iMac. I'm just going to give you an overview of the process, so while you're doing your repair, as usual, you'll want to follow the step-by-step -step instructions and the repair guide on our site. Also, the instructions are going to be different between the different versions of iMacs, so make sure you look up your machine's EMC number on our site. The EMC number is printed under the base of the iMac, and if you can't find it there, head to the ID or Mac page on our site and look it up there. A quick word of warning, if you've got a late 2009 or later iMac, you're going to need to buy the same brand of hard drive that your computer initially shipped with. Apple switched to a new kind of hard drive cable that uses the hard drive's internal temperature sensors. So before you go buy that new hard drive, head to About This Mac and then the Serial ATA section to see what kind of hard drive you currently have. The machine I'm working on is EMC number 2210, and I'm going to upgrade its original 250 gigabyte hard drive for a much roomier 2 terabyte hard drive. For this repair, you're going to need a plastic spudger, a set of heavy-duty suction cups, a Phillips number one screwdriver, a T6 Torx screwdriver, and a T8 Torx screwdriver, and of course, your replacement hard drive. Instead of getting each of these drivers individually, I'd opt for something like the 54-piece bit driver kit. That way, you've got almost all the bits you'll ever need. Also, you're going to want to have some screen cleaner and a soft cloth handy for later in the repair. All of these things you can find at ifixit.com. Now that I've got my parts and tools laid out, I can get started. Before I do anything, I'm going to lay the iMac backside down and make sure that my work surface doesn't have anything on it that might scratch the aluminum on the iMac. Removing the glass is my favorite part, but before I do that, I'm going to remove the RAM access door. The screw isn't going to come out entirely, so once it's loosened, you can just lift the whole thing right off. Now that the door is off, we're going to use the heavy-duty suction cups to remove the glass. All you've got to do is just push it on there and then flip the little handle up and do the same thing for the other one. And once these are both on here, just lift straight up and it should come off fairly easily. <laughs> it's held on by magnets, so it shouldn't be too much of a struggle. Now that the glass is off, I can see all the screws that are holding the bezel in place. So I'm going to switch to my T8 bit and remove all of those. Now that all those screws are removed, I can remove the bezel and I'm going to start near the top of the computer and work my way down. Once it's loose, you'll notice that it's still connected to the computer by the microphone cable. So we're going to want to disconnect that before we lift the whole bezel off. The next big step is to remove the LCD. But before I can do that, I'm going to need to disconnect a couple of cables and remove a couple more screws. Once everything is disconnected and all those screws are removed, I'm going to lift the LCD off, starting on the left side and rotating it towards the right side. And what you'll see is that it is still connected to the logic board via these inverter cables down here. And this is kind of the tricky part. Um, you can either prop this up on something and then disconnect them, or maybe ask a friend for help to hold this up for you while you disconnect the cables. OK, so now we can see the hard drive, but before we can remove it, we're going to disconnect its thermal sensor. Don't just yank on the wire, actually grab the connector and, with your fingernails and pull it out that way. That way you don't damage it. Once that's removed, taking out the hard drive does require a bit of force, so maybe brace your hand on the foot and then use the other hand to push down and lift up. And then it should just come out. It's still connected by the SATA power and SATA data cables. The data cable you can just pull out with your fingers, and that's pretty easy. The power cable is going to be a little more difficult. I'm going to use my spudger for that one. And you're just going to wedge the spudger in between the connector and the hard drive, twist it, and then pull it out. Now that the hard drive is totally disconnected, all I've got to do is remove all the little bits from the old hard drive that I'm going to transfer over to the new hard drive. So that'll include the EMI foam tape, the bracket, and the thermal sensor. Once all those things are taken off, I'll just reattach them to my new 2 terabyte hard drive and put my iMac back together. Now I've got a couple of pointers for reassembly. 
Don't forget to thoroughly clean the LCD and glass panel before you reinstall them. There's nothing worse than putting all those screws back in only to find you've trapped a bunch of fingerprints and dust on the inside. Also, before you put the bezel back on, don't forget to reconnect the microphone cable. It's super easy to rush through reassembly and totally skip that part. As with any new hard drive, you're going to need to format it before use. We've got a handy OS X install guide on our site to get you up and running. Of course, you can find all of the parts and tools for this and many other repairs at ifixit.com. And if you run into any problems doing your repairs, there are lots of solutions in the iMac repair guide on our site. Thanks for watching and happy repairing.